Sega and Tech here. The Nintendo Switch is Nintendo's first hybrid gaming console, giving you the best of handheld and home consoles in one package. It's probably the first gaming console where you can start playing the game on the TV and then just grab the console, slide in the controllers and play on the go until your battery runs out. I've had the Nintendo Switch for almost a year now and this has become my most favorite gaming console. Before we dive into the technical details of the Nintendo Switch, let's talk about what you get in the box when you purchase a Nintendo Switch. Inside the Nintendo Switch box, you'll be able to find the console or the tablet, two Joy-Con controllers, one for the left and one for the right, a console dock to dock your Switch to connect it to an external screen, a Joy-Con dock to play the game wirelessly when the Switch is connected to an external screen. Along with all these, you also get a power AC adapter and an HDMI cable. This is what you get in the box when you purchase a Nintendo Switch. Now, let's talk about the design and the specs of the Nintendo Switch and why it makes it my favorite gaming console. The Nintendo Switch is basically a 6.2 inch touch screen 720p resolution device. It has thick bezels on all the sides of the screen. And when you turn towards the top, you'll notice the power control button, the volume control buttons, and if you keep moving towards the right side, you'll notice hefty vents that are there for cooling purposes. That means they make sure that your switch doesn't heat up when you're playing high-end graphic games. And towards the right side of these hefty vents is the headphone jack, where you can plug in your earphones for better audio experience. And right next to the headphone jack is the game card slot, where you can insert your game and then play that game and install it on your switch. Now, when you turn towards the back side of the switch, you'll notice that there's a rail kickback stand. This allows you to put your switch on a tabletop gaming mode, and then you can use your wireless controllers to play the game when the switch is put on your table. So it means that you don't need to carry the switch on your hands every time you want to play the game. Now, you'll also notice that there's a microcard SD slot right beneath the kickstand and that's because the switch comes with an inbuilt 32 GB of storage. So if you want to expand your storage to play more games, you can buy a micro SD card and put the micro SD card in the micro SD card slot and you'll get your storage. What attracted me towards the switch was these dual Joy-Con controllers. The Joy-Con controllers slide towards the side rails on the switch and that gives you a satisfying clip once they get inserted in the correct position and they are very easy to remove too. You just have to press the button on the back and then you can just remove them easily. Now, both the Joy-Con controllers have an unlock stick, four face buttons, the right Joy-Con controller has the X, A, Y, D buttons and the left Joy-Con controller has the four arrows. Now, both have trigger buttons on the top. The left Joy-Con Joy controller has the screenshot button and the right Joy-Con controller has the home button. The screenshot button can be used to screenshot any time in the game or on the home screen to capture your most memorable moments. And the home button can be used to get back to the home when you're in the game. Now, the biggest advantage of the Joy-Con controllers is that you have two controllers at your disposal. So that means if you're playing multiplayer games, you can share your Joy-Con with your friends and then both of you can play the game together on the Switch. And that's what gaming is all about, gaming together is more fun, right? Meanwhile, the dock is a matte black plastic slab into which I can slide the Nintendo Switch and then the Nintendo Switch charges via USB-C port. And through the dock, I can connect it to an external screen. And that's because it has the HDMI cable connection through which I can attach HDMI cable and the other end of the HDMI cable will be attached to the external screen. It can be a monitor, it can be even a TV. And it also houses the AC adapters connection and the USB ports. There are three USB ports totally on the device or in the dock. There are two towards this side and one on the back side. Now, Nintendo claims that the Nintendo Switch has a battery life around three to six hours and that totally depends on what game you're playing, how much brightness you've set up the Switch to or whether your Wi-Fi is on or off. When I was playing high-end graphic games like Zelda and Pokemon, I got a battery life of around two, two and a half hours to three hours. And I, I was really okay with it because I wouldn't play the Switch for more than 3 hours on a single setting. And even if I didn't want to, I could just simply dock the Switch 
and connect it to an external screen and take out my controllers and play the switch wirelessly and that's where the switch wins my points. The Nintendo Switch is such an amazing system with so many ways to play. You can just plug it into the TV or you can just play on the go as a handheld console or you can split the controllers between your friends to play these multiplayer games. I do know that the Nintendo Switch cannot compete with the Xbox or the PlayStation on the graphic horsepower space, but it can run games of the same caliber. Mario Odyssey, Pokemon, Breath of Wild, Zelda, all these are high-end graphic games which run with ease on the Nintendo Switch. I've played these games for countless number of hours and probably will keep playing more and more, but that's because of the versatility that the Nintendo Switch offers me. I'm not restricted to a certain place to play these games. I do not have to sit on the couch in front of my TV to play these games. Nintendo has certainly changed the way you have to think about consoles. The consoles are no longer sitting under your TV. You can just take your console wherever you go and just play the games on the go. And that's why the Nintendo Switch is my most favorite gaming console. I can just play it as a handy gaming device or I can just plug it to the TV and just game away. Now, I do know that the Nintendo Switch isn't perfect. There are a few flaws and I wish Nintendo makes sure that when they are releasing the next version of Nintendo Switch, they make these changes. I wish the resolution may be upgraded from 720p to 1080p. The bezels will be more shorter so that I get a better screen for a bigger or more immersive gaming experience. I wish they also could add Bluetooth support for headphones. Right now the only way you can put your earphones is for the headphone jack and it doesn't support AirPods or your headphones like your Beats headphones and I wish Nintendo does change that. That's my review about the Nintendo Switch guys. The Nintendo Switch currently retails for $299 here in the United States but you can also get another version of the Nintendo Switch that's called the Nintendo Switch Lite for $199. But the difference is the Nintendo Switch Lite doesn't have removable Joy-Cons or it doesn't have a dock you can dock to the TV. But it's just a pure handheld gaming experience and maybe there are a few people who just want a handheld gaming experience and don't want to connect the Switch to a TV and for them the Nintendo Switch Lite is the answer. So yes, that's it guys. That's my review on the Nintendo Switch. I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, go hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please go hit the subscribe button. And I'll attach all the links down below if you want to check out the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch Lite. I'll also attach the links to my Instagram and Twitter accounts where I post daily tech updates that are happening around the world. You can please go follow me there if you want to know about the latest tech updates. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.